Uh, the last time, uh, we're still on two topics. We're still on uh, why would I believe in uh, the, and I'll, I'll take, I'll drop it, put it in a different way. An imaginary God coming from an imaginary book, the Bible. But the way we left off last time was um, Deuteronomy. And uh, Eric was upset because in Deuteronomy there were um, penalties that the Lord put in the book about certain uh, um, sexual acts, bestiality, uh, sleeping with your mother, sleeping with your sister. Um, you know, so hold no, on. no, hold on. Uh, sorry. Let, yeah. let, let, me, let me just j- jump in there. Yeah, uh, man, uh, one, uh, it's a man lies with these things because in the Bible women are treated as property. But uh, two, it's if a man sleeps with a daughter and a mother. So it's like don't sleep with your mother-in-law. Um, I don't know that it has a specific incest clause. It probably doesn't, since incest is an act. It does it? I think it. I think it does actually. Um, but which is strange because many of the heroes of the Old Testament also uh, slept with their families. Um, but you seem to have left off when a man lies with a man, which I believe is Leviticus twenty nineteen. Um, but in any I'll case, lie. yeah. And and for all these crimes, the punishment is death. I'm not saying they're crimes. My, God is saying what I've crimes. been given. What I've been given, they're warning labels. And yes, it did cover if you a lot do X, you will it was die. It was sleeping with your mother. It was. It covers all sexualities that are not in our uh, physiological makeup. If you homosexuality that, is within well, our physiological and, mm-hmm. makeup, Rob. I, I'm not, I don't so, want to touch gay because I just the know, Bible does. You know, I know gay people. <laughs> I know how it goes. The only thing I can say is. In your physiology, you can't have children. I beg your so pardon? You, that, I, you, sorry. A gay, be, per, a gay to, couple cannot okay. have, bear a child. Is that correct? I, lesbians exist. Correct. Another thing the Bible leaves out <laughs> repeatedly, uh, probably because at the time women were property, so the idea that they would do anything that was displeasing to either their father, their father-in-law, or uh, their husband was just not thought of because you could just kill them anyway because women were property in the uh, same way that slaves were. But, yeah, sure. Um, if I marry another dude um, who doesn't have a uterus, then neither of us have a womb, then neither of us can give birth. There are infertile couples already, all the time. Yes, being able to give birth and being able to have children really are two different things. Yeah, I mean, I mean to really. be clear, there's that, and then there's also, yeah, I, mean, I can you know, raise yeah. a child pretty well. I mean, He's going to be a chess boxing century, champion. You were pretty much, you know, you were left out of the scene. As far as children bearing, unless, you know, that's it. You know, yeah, you, it, it took human beings conquering extent. nature to make this happen. Uh, funnily enough, there wasn't a miracle by any god that made it happen. But Okay, so <laughs> Rob, I'm sorry if I'm yeah. correct. You were trying to make the point of you were being asked why do you believe in an imaginary god coming from an imaginary book and you were trying to make a point about about all of these things Mm -hmm. so what can you yeah can you elaborate further on that yeah we did sort of run roughshod uh, imagine the the imaginary god the imaginary book create a better life for everybody and Uh, and I, i could go i i have to answer one question women were not considered properly it's um, they weren't I considered do, properly. Pop, you are right about that. Pop, 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 <laughs> property. <laughs> property is, I mean, you know, look, is I what you meant. Yeah. I prayed on it. I think the problem with what has occurred here, why um, atheism has become more popular, is because people don't understand people anymore. And I would take it a step further that people who don't understand people don't understand themselves. Okay. Once again, it's an identity crisis that is prevalent in the uh, okay. century. Can I? Can, let me just let me just ask you to clarify. When you say atheism has become more popular because people do not understand people, um, what is That's it right. about? So presumably, are you just referring to people not accepting faith and people deconverting? Right. What is it about, in your words, not understanding people that would lead someone to? For example, leave uh, the church. Uh, the, 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 why would somebody leave the church? Because they don't understand people. If you don't feel comfortable within, if you don't feel comfortable within your own church, if you don't feel comfortable within your own family, you're going to find something. Uh, to, why is it not making you comfortable? So, to, so then to be clear, you do, when you, you look to, at you look at the Bible, you look at God. And then you say, well, that must be it. 
But once, so, once you all Rob, that your identity, you can't, you don't understand people. So, yeah. Rob, can I ask you? Uh, can I ask you a question? Um, according to what you believe, the whole purpose is to understand your God. Is that not correct? No, people. We you're supposed to understand people, people but not people. God. Excuse me? Sorry. The, isn't the point to understand God because according to what you believe, man is fallible. Um, so therefore... No, I think the, well, that's correct. But you have to understand people so you can understand God because God is the authority of people, not the authority as in arresting and punishment. He knows us better than we know. But if you can't understand people, then you can't understand God. Just to be clear, are you saying that God does not punish people? Um, no, I, I would say up until the old the end of the Old Testament, yeah, that that whole that whole that ended. Jesus became Lord, and the world changed again. The, so, to the be clear, is Jesus God eternal? Is all about healing, not about destruction. Okay, so to be clear, is God eternal? Yes, correct. Is God unchanging? Yes, correct. Okay, so a moment ago when you said the world changed because Jesus became Lord, presumably Jesus, being the same as God, has always been Jesus and has always been Lord and hasn't changed. No, that's untrue. He okay, can you earth, clarify? He walked the earth as a man. He was just a, like he was like the seed that comes out of your sack. One piece. He walked the earth, he experienced it, died for it came back, and now he rules because he knows it better than the Father does. That's, you know, that's a dynasty of heaven. So to be clear, are Jesus and God, the Father, different beings? Yes, they are. Okay. Just, I just needed that clarified. So God, the Father, is responsible for all of the Old Testament uh, Yes, that's correct. Crap. Yes where people are suffering and dying and he doesn't give a shit um, in this. So when people are suffering and dying now and God doesn't intervene, the God that is responsible is Jesus. No, um, once again, you're putting everything on God and not understanding man. But God is supposed to, to be all-powerful and all-knowing. and all. Okay. So wouldn't the onus be on God for yeah. all of this clarification? No. Is not if he had to if he had to stop every crime, every thief, every murder, everything that goes on, it would be a nonstop action because that's you don't understand man. So what God, you're doing is you're God using has a, looked God at is a scapegoat for man. Yeah, it's, it's not a scapegoat. If if you claim to be the authority and the teacher and you're going to punish people with hell, um, then you're responsible if you have yeah. rules and tell people to follow them. And enforce one, them in a specific way. Like, you know, the inter interpretation of hell is a, the one you're using is a very generic brand um, That's used true. by churches that, to teach kids not to get in bad trouble, turn into, say, uh, Butch Cassidy or John Dillinger. You know, that is always the okay. stop of the church to prevent people from becoming real bad. Okay, so. There's a difference between little bad and big bad, correct? <laughs> I yep. The, I I feel like okay. there's differences in the amount of um, bad. So to be clear, can you tell me what you believe about hell? Um, I don't discern it. I've heard a lot of stories about. It. I've heard people say, "Man, I wish you know I was sitting there watching that guy fry." Um, you know, and um, I don't get into it. I believe there's in heaven. There also is a, in even though there's eternal love. And everything that goes along with it without a world of sin, there is some kind of caste system that makes it work out somehow. To say that we're all equal in heaven after a life on earth with, a, with somebody that really uh, hurt people in a lot of ways, no, I don't. But I don't discern it that much. I just don't believe in eternal fire forever and ever and ever. And there's a right. lot of um, popular, very learned um, people who study the Old Testament and the New Testament agree with that. That is a church fallacy, but it's put there once again. It's a label. Okay, okay, so I'm sorry, Rob. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. You said you don't believe with that um, 
you know, with that fallacy of the church. Do you think that that is a fallacy on behalf of God or on behalf of people? Uh, people. They're not. Many people don't read the Bible, first of all. Agreed. You might have one on your, your. A lot of people might have one, and a lot of people don't even have them in their house. Okay. But once again, I'm going to stick to the. I'm going to stick to it. It's a stopgate for to prevent people from becoming worse than they are. So, in in a lot of cases, a lot of case. You know, I was listening to a guy talk the other day. He got out of jail, and he's still copping an attitude. You know, like <laughs> doesn't work. What? Uh, no, um, you're right or you're wrong. Okay. Okay, so to be clear, you believe that if a person is afraid of hell, this will stop them from sin? Uh, partially, yeah. It's a, I would say it works a little. I, what, I would say it works some, yeah. It depend, you know, it's all right. in the teachers. It's all in the ministry. It's, you right. know, it goes on and on. So it's all if, in the home. If God has given his message to mankind, which um, stop me if I say something that you don't believe because I'm, I'm trying to meet you where you're at, but I wasn't going to... Um, you know, grill you for 20 minutes about the specifics of your belief. I feel like that would be unfair. Um, but again, you know, stop me if I say, oh, you know, Jesus is an antelope and you don't believe that. Um, I'm assuming that you don't believe Jesus is an antelope. But uh, to be clear, yeah, <laughs> to be clear, God has given, you know, his word and guidance. Jesus has given his word and guidance to humanity. Jesus cares for the well being of humans. And Jesus Correct. is maximally powerful. Uh, I would say, I would compare, yeah, I would say he's maximally powerful, but he doesn't use it. Because it's man's been man's problem since the Garden of Eden. Since that, since the fall so, of Eden, man well, has brought okay, a lot so, of problems about so himself. Now, now, now we have something that I think might be an error in the way that you've described your theology, because... I, I believe that you said that all of the Old Testament um, stuff was the the responsibility of God the Father and not of Jesus. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. That's, so yeah. Uh, the Garden of Eden, Old Testament, and then all the things that happened after that, including the Tower of Babel and all of the you know genocides that the God the Father commanded his people to commit— um, those are instances of God the Father intervening in human affairs in a way that you say Jesus does not. Um, yes, we can, we can go there. But the okay. interpretation you're implying is that the, uh, the people that were conquered by war, and that's basically what was going on in the Middle East, and then genocide. Um, God assisted because he felt they were be they were a more a better people. What do you want from me? You know, the uh, the term hell comes from a, 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 a tribe in the Middle East that used to sacrifice children to to a pagan god. Okay, but does That's hell original. exist? So what we're just, talking just, about is God choosing a specific people that yeah. he would watch and listen to and said, well, they're better. I'll support them. Is that is there anything wrong with that? Yes. If you don't understand man, then you can't yes. understand God. I don't know. If you, if, you, if your goal is, wow, all of the humans are my children and I love them all, then picking this favorite and saying, hello, my favorite people, go next door and kill every man, woman, and child that lives over there because I don't like them anymore, then yes, there is something wrong with that. No, nah, you're, 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 you're telling the story wrong. Pretty much the story is in that time... In that area of the world, it was kill or be killed. You're misinterpreting. Then, is that. God powerful yeah, enough to stop humans from <laughs> right. killing each other if he wanted no, to? No, we were born with, we, we've always yeah. had freedom If God of wanted to, well, except when God intervenes, which he does in the Old Testament, but if God wanted to stop one person from murdering another, could he? He wouldn't. It wouldn't yes, fix it. Yes, so that's a yes and no answer, so, Rob. So <laughs> you can't have I, a yes and no answer. You can't have it because it's 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 a no. It's like saying no. No. Could, so it, am I more wouldn't. powerful than God? Yes or no? You? Yes. Um, you have freedom of choice, but I yes. But if God if God decided, God. you know what, I'm going to kill Jamie right now. Could he? He wouldn't. That's I know that he point. wouldn't, Rob. That's not the question well, I asked. Yes, was he is he strong enough? Right, right, like I am strong enough to flip this want, table, you know, but that doesn't mean I'm going to flip it right now. I don't know what to say about that question. Obviously, Answer it honestly. When you, no, he, could, he wouldn't. 
You just All win. Right. That's not that. Thank you. That's like that's... saying a good man would kill somebody. If you look at the book of the Old New Testament, he was a good man. Who he was? He wasn't going about killing people. You're asking if a good man would who, kill somebody. Who was? I say no. Who was? Jesus was a good right. man. Yes, but earlier in this call, correct me if I'm wrong, you said that God, you said that God the Father and Jesus the Son were different people. Correct. Okay, different God. so when you, yeah, different gods. So when I'm describing atrocities ordered by God the Father in the Old Testament and you say, but Jesus was good, you're describing a different person. The, so if, if I'm going to say the, God the Father uh, in the Old sorry. Testament is responsible for the genocide that he instructed his people to commit, and you say, but Jesus said, uh, you know, dance and flowers and be nice to each other, you have not answered the objection I have raised. The objection I've raised is, again. in the Old Please. Testament, God the Father instructs his chosen people to commit genocide. I, there's, there's a few instances. I remember uh, at the at the at the yes. uh, when he came down. All right, when he came down from the with the tablets, correct? But you don't you didn't have the skip you didn't have the information on that either. The people that were worshiping the idol were planning to kill Moses. Okay, uh, you're assuming you make you that is that has the, nothing the to do with the, the genocide. Look in the in the Old Testament of this book, God says to his people. Go kill all the, uh, I, sorry, I've been reading the Book of Mormon, so I was about to say Lamanites, but that's the wrong people. <laughs> um, go kill all the Amalekites, thank you. Uh, go kill all the Amalekites and their children, and uh, except for the young virgins that you keep for yourselves, but and all of their animals and their plants so that nothing will grow there. It's very much, go kill all of those people, all of them, wipe them out. That's something that God commands. So the fact that, oh, he protected Moses from an uprising isn't related to that act I, I got, of I ordering got genocide. I have a modern-day comeback where I'm trying to explain what the Middle East was like back then. Okay, the I Middle East back story. then was very clearly yeah, directly is, under the heel of Yahweh story. God. I'm going to give you a modern-day example okay. of a tribe, and I can't remember, I don't know exactly where this island is, if you just go, they're so secluded, nothing, no electronics. If you go there by boat and walk on that island, they will kill you instantly. And yeah, South Sentinel they Island. Should, yes, I remember South, that. South Sentinel now Island. Getting, now, mm -hmm. you're getting to the, now we're getting down to what true tribalism was thousands of years yeah. ago. Yeah, why didn't God change that? To somebody's why land. didn't God change that? Why did God play into real tribalism and say, oh, you know, a, a god as I'm worshipped now is a tribal god and is giving tribal instructions, almost as if he was man-made rather than the other way around, instead of saying, oh, actually, you know what? You guys shouldn't be separate tribes. I shouldn't take a side in this. I should tell both sides not to commit atrocities like genocide and not to commit, uh, you know, not to go to war over things that I could provide. If I was god, I wouldn't leave people hungry to fight over food. Right. I would feed them and tell them to be nice to each other. Right, and why also, didn't your god do that? How do you know, how do you you know that? You don't understand people enough. You, you blame God for everything. You want miracles all the time. But you Christians pray for miracles okay. all the time. And also okay. talking Sorry. about the God yeah. that was on the, the people that were on the island of the, the guy who was killed was trying to spread his message of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even though he had been warned repeatedly not to go there. I yeah. mean, the, the people on that it's island it's repeatedly... Um, he was attacked for trying to uh, come to that island uh, at least twice before he was actually killed. So how? who are you to say that perhaps it wasn't the same God that was telling those people, hey, kill this guy because he is trying to attack you? So now you're saying there's a God that tells people to kill people? Hey, oh. Jamie just said God commanded the genocide of, of the, men, women, and children. The Amalekites. That is what yeah. the God of the Christian Bible so, has done. I think we're trying to you misinterpret self-defense. Yeah. I, I mean, no, I don't, world, because self-defense isn't what we're God. talking about. We're talking about a God that said, go kill defend, those defend people. Correct. That's not self-defense. Additionally, if God can appear to the ancient Israelites and say, follow my instructions and persuade them, was God too weak to appear to the ancient Amalekites? 
have no, um, have, you know, he, he, had, he had his thoughts somewhere. I guess it was, we, we do know it was with Adam and Eve. You know, you're trying, you have, you have the best that there is, and you try to take that or I don't know, you know, I don't know what to tell you. You're, so so what you're saying is God couldn't do better. <laughs> God settled is what you're saying. God just threw up his hands and said, forget yeah, it. God. Yeah. God, he didn't. He, he accomplished. And what we're talking about is. He accomplished genocide. Also. It's what we're talking he about. He protected. He taught the people how to protect themselves. That's no, he taught the people how to commit genocide. Uh, all right, uh, listen. You, you you refuse to believe the fact that people have a, that people are people, and there's a duality of nature. You refuse to acknowledge that the you, God of the Old Testament commanded people. genocide. He de- he taught them how to defend themselves. No, he taught he you told them to commit happened. genocide. I'm telling if. You couldn't walk if he'd said, hey, you, you know, build fortifications, it. here's some weapons, never use them offensively, but your weapons are more powerful, that would have been a more effective, less genocide way of defending yourself. Why is it that I'm smarter than the God of the Old Testament? You're not. You have, really? Because <laughs> I just thought of a way of instructing can't, ancient can't people to not go out and out to protect themselves prevented. without having to kill a whole bunch of you people. You can't figure out what genocide is. Do you know what genocide is, Rob? Yeah, Hitler did it. Uh, all yeah. the leaders, all yeah. the communist leaders. Right. We know what genocide is. We okay. know what a world what to, is without religion. Uh, that we know. Oh, my God. We know what godless men are like. That's mm-hmm. I mean, I to be clear, to, to be very, way, as, uh, you can, to be clear, it's, it's, you're right as this is all made up and everyone gets to, to say that they're the real fans of this book. Um, but if you're going to try and tell me that, that, that Hitler, among others, uh, didn't say I'm doing this, you know, it's our duty to our creator to wipe out the Jews then we're going to have a real problem with the historical record. But in any case, I don't have a problem with you saying, oh, Hitler yeah. was wrong about God, because that's a very easy apologetic to say. But I get, I get told, oh, no, Hitler was an avowed atheist, and he said he was an atheist far no, too many times. No, there's no... Yeah, no, there's no... He identifies as Catholic. Yeah. Anybody can identify themselves with any religion yeah. to okay. their activities. I just, I just you know wanted how politics to, go. I just wanted to make you know sure that we were... Are. Once again, you don't understand man. You're sitting wow. here saying Hitler was really a believer in God, but how do wow. you know he just was, He lied about everything else. Why can't you lie about I don't what he believes in? I mean, to be clear, he, he didn't lie about what he wanted to do when he was in power. And he mm-hmm. didn't lie to his generals. But... It wasn't like no, a... he was honest. It was a... He was honest about how he hated so the Jews. So you know and more to about him. Hitler's understanding, but you don't understand why God just threw up his hands. Is that what you're saying, Rob? I know why God threw up his hands. First of all, why you got to ask yourself why did God turn? Why did God create His Son, and why did His Son eventually become? the God of heavens over earth. That's because that's the way the early himself. Christians, when they fought wars over whose version of the story that was a continuation of an ancient story, decided that the story was going to go. Because Once the again, early proto-Orthodox Christians the defeated the um, the Marians, I think they're... I probably butchered the yeah, name. I, there's lots of stories, but once again, creating... Pro- yeah, and the one that was... ...being taken, given on God's shoulders. That's all it is. You you have to understand man to understand God. Why he says yes, you do. You have to understand that men create gods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- th- things are bad. You, you're you've said that. Oh no no. If Jesus in the modern day here, we'll go back to the modern day because uh, for whatever reason you refuse to admit that genocide exists. Um, and was instructed by I God did, in the I Bible. I said it, it existed in... in the, yeah, you've, you've claimed the, multiple times that genocide is self-defense. Genocide people. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. So yeah. going with So it? did the God of the Old Testament. You're calling it genocide. I'm yes, because he said, it go forth genocide. and kill all of the people. That's what that's genocide not, is. No, 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 that's not genocide. That's, that's genocide. You kill your own people, that's genocide. What? Wait a minute. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Oh, know, my God. Do we need to go to the textbook you, definition of genocide? All right. <laughs> but, if, if, if your problem is with the specific word genocide, then we'll yes, do pogrom. All right? He committed a pogrom successfully against the Amalekites. Is right, that correct. morally acceptable? It says, according I, I to... I would say the Amalekites <laughs> at that time would have been a real problem for anybody. We're going back to the same, the oh island. Oh, my God. You couldn't so, go there. You so to be clear, it was water. justified 
for the people of for God to instruct his people to go kill all of this particular tribe of God's children. Was that action justified? Uh, not aware of it. You know, the, it's the one we've been talking about this whole time, where the ancient yeah, Israelites you're in the about book. Yeah, one specific text, like what was yeah, going I'm, I'm on talking there. about one very specific example, and I'm asking you the very specific question: Is that morally acceptable? Um, if it was in self-defense, yes. All right, it wasn't. How do you know? It doesn't say anything. It just the gives book you long right it's here does not name. describe self-defense. It describes the complete annihilation of a group of people based on their culture and heritage. Is that That's a morally acceptable you thing? No other, you have no other evidence. You have, a, you have two lines. Well, I'm to be very clear, the evidence that. shows that most of the things written about in the Old Testament didn't happen. However, I've, my understanding is that your belief is that the Old Testament in this book describes the nature of God the Father. Am I wrong in believing that the Old Testament of this book describes the actions and nature of God the Father? As the protector, yes. As All right, the protector, fantastic. God the Father, In this protector. book that you've just said describes the nature and actions of God the Father, God the Father okay. instructs his people to go forth and kill all the Amalekites. Was that something that is morally acceptable? I don't know. I'd have to look up and find out what the Malachites were like. If I believe it was a self, it was self protection. Wow. Self protection. If just like in the world we live in today. Oh, my God. Self-protection exists on many levels. You know, I, I have a deep passion for current affairs and politics, and I thought I was a cynic. But apparently, <laughs> I'm not. Because, wow, all right, that's, I'm, I'm a little a taken aback. I, don't, I try not to pay attention to politics. I really don't. It's, you know, I know... It shows. I knew somebody very personally. It probably drove them out of their mind watching that every day. Well, yeah, no, I'm not. It, it can be very disturbing to watch current affairs. Well, Rob, I will just yeah, say that I think if that you can't watch, if you can't have <laughs> compassion in your life for the people that are needy, yes, you are absolutely you correct. But if, you and but if you don't have compassion for people that that people need protection at the same time you don't understand man man or woman you know, we keep using the word man well it's man interesting and woman. i think there's a uh, misconception about what you're understanding of what woman is too She's not a slave. I, a uh, I agree. I Let me make that very clear. Uh, okay. No but human is property, you, rightly or called. Or should be, right. Or, or should be rightly called property, regardless of whether or not they are a woman. Um, so I can agree with you on that point. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but the way you interpret the Bible, you miss, you miss so many. You, you know less than you, you say. You read it and you take it as text. But you don't have any underlying theme that makes it, you have no knowledge of the underlying theme. But if this is God's it. infallible and perfect word, then how can Jamie, uh, how can Jamie just reading those words be interpreted in any way than other, other than what they're supposed to be said and what's yeah. other than what's said? Like life, Jamie doesn't understand people well enough. That's so, it. to be clear, <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> people well enough. Therefore, yes. God's perfect word doesn't work. Hey, oh, is that, is this you the, don't <laughs> understand something. If you don't Fantastic. understand Fantastic. Why is God bad at explaining things? <laughs> he does. It depends if you listen. Just say you have a thought, and you ignore that thought. What's he supposed to do? Hit you with a stick? You're ignoring hey, your own like, thoughts. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's tells, say like, that... I talk to you now. Let's say I have a thought and I listen to the thought and the thought is bad. And then someone says that thought is bad and I say, no, you were wrong about it. Let's say that I read a book with plain text and I say, wow, the book says what this plain text is. And someone says, no, you're wrong about that because you don't understand because. Where am I supposed to go from there, Rob? Um, you, if you don't know right from wrong from now... And no, I mean that. So I'm, let's let's go to the story of yeah. Abraham, where okay. God commanded him to kill his his son as a as a test of loyalty. Um, was Abraham hearing voices, or was he following? Did he really understand what God told him to do, or was was, was telling him to do? Uh, you know, I because. Of today's society, with so pe many people having mental illnesses, that's a difficult. You you use that subject 
but it's to, because of present day society. But we're not talking about present day. This was back in the uh, this was back in the biblical that's, that's times. Nobody, yeah. you know, nobody can handle that now because society is on a social has too many social problems. We can't use that. All we can say is he didn't kill him. God stopped him. It was a right. test. So to be clear, was, wait, wait, wait. It we was talk, the word of God. Talk about the two brothers. Here we are again, understanding people. One brother offers something better to God. The other brother doesn't. What happens? Instead of the, the other brother killed, that Cain killed Abel. Why mm. jealousy? Now you got to understand man a little better. Yeah, I also understand that God didn't stop that. Like I'm, I said, if God had to hold everybody's hand back, control everybody's mind, we'd be a bunch free will. He would be doing lots of work. Oh right. no, boo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> He would have to take some you responsibility. Know, which he would have to take responsibility. If people have yeah. to take responsibility, so should God. Uh, I believe because we're looking at we're looking at the the, the coming again, and everybody is. He is taking responsibility. If you really well, actually no, he isn't. <laughs> yeah. To be to be clear, when you yeah, say taking responsibility, if, if coming, do you, if his, Rob, if he's Rob, hold on, hold on. Again, one gonna, one question. Yeah. When you say he is taking responsibility, do you mean that right now God is taking actions to mitigate atrocities? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, you know, it could be worse. Which one? Even though, even though we have a war, I think it's the longest unofficial war that's been going on in history in the Middle East. The wars have gotten smaller. God is has his hand in politics. But then why so aren't they just disappearing altogether? Yeah. Why I, is it, yeah. Because, I, I mean, in my mind, yeah, the UN peacekeeping force is doing a bang-up job and God is absent. What, do, what, are, you, what are you talking about here? It, if in what in what way is God, God intervening? Why, I should say the question you have to ask yourself: Why and when He comes, He'll have the answer. But why did it take thousands of years since His second coming? You know why? There's a reason. It's not just because it's a well, legend people, and not the you know, truth. People are being punished. They got You know they deserve what they get. No, there's a real reason why the second, the third coming. Well, we'd like to really know what that reason is. Yeah. <laughs> That, so, well, that's you know that's why that's, is God waiting? Discernment. Do you do you know why God is waiting? Um, off the top of my head, when he uh, you know from what I've heard and what I've read, like everything uh, is comes, off the top of your head. Still not going right. to be recognized. Um, um, it's going to take a couple hundred years for the world, and he's not coming as a ruler. He's bringing back something in, from the Garden of Eden, whatever that is going to return us to a state of. Uh, non-sin, whatever you want to compare that to. But yeah, there's a reason. It's a down-to-earth so, reason. It's not so, punishment. It's something that couldn't happen cool. in the past. It has Why to happen not? now. Um, communication. What, right. if Jesus, what if the Lord cool. came? So when Jesus the came world, the first time, yeah. why did he not leave instructions for the creation of the Internet? Um, because we would not even know what he was talking about. That's a big thing. Is God a we teacher? Put, yeah. Okay, why is he incapable? Is God capable of teaching human beings how to use technology? Yeah, he did. Okay, That's so we got why? this far in two thousand years. <laughs> yeah, we got so this far. what you're saying is it took two thousand years. It took the you know the dark ages of Europe, uh, the Inquisition, basically human events unfolding in the way that you would expect human events to unfold if humans were not aided by a divine being. That needed to happen for two thousand years before now he can start to prepare to come back? Um, yes. That, that, you know, what do you want me to say? That's the it clearest could, yes possible. we've heard you say so far, if Rob. He, Thank you, Rob. Here, <laughs> let's say if he was here 300 years ago, no telephones, no way of communicating. Does God, what does <laughs> what? God need with a telephone? <laughs> right. Because how are people going to talk to people? What if somebody met God and... Why can't to God appear in... Mo like, okay, is God capable uh, of appearing in more places than just Jerusalem? Um, yes, but I don't think... So if God, if God wanted to yeah, and he said, yeah, you know what, I'm going to come down, I'm going to appear in Moscow first and I'll teach there yeah. for a week, a month, three days, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to appear in Berlin for three days and teach there for a week, a month, three days. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to appear in Johannesburg and then, you know, in South America, in North America, wherever. Is God capable of doing that? 
Um, I, can I, count, I say, yeah, but I have to counter with a question. Is he going to return in the flesh? If he returns in the flesh, you have to deal with him in the flesh like you did. All right. Like so, okay. Okay. So, let's say, so let's say he doesn't return in the flesh. Let's say he returns in one of those places and to all of those other places he sends the angel Gabriel and the archangel. You wouldn't uh, be able to handle it. Nobody we wouldn't be able to. Why, you can't not, handle no. the truth of God, <laughs> apparently. That's pretty much it. You would not be able to handle it. If an angel appeared in front of, uh, in Moscow, in front of the of the. But king, we're not talking about angels. King. We're talking in about God. Putin, you wouldn't be able to handle it. It's just front, sorry. too much for the mind to handle. That's sorry. Like, so now that's who's the one who doesn't understand people? If you're all outright saying that we wouldn't be able to handle God's appearance, who's the one that doesn't understand people? Um, people, you don't understand people. You're saying you could handle it. I'm saying you couldn't. You, well, but you are. No, you're, you're the, the one who's saying, <laughs> you're yeah. the one who's saying that people. Breakdown. You, okay. you would. I'm if sorry. Put him in, if all of a sudden, if all of a sudden a heavenly body appeared in Moscow in front of all of them, they'd have nervous breakdowns. It would be, it would be, you know, they wouldn't be able to handle it. They I would, mean. And then they would misinterpret it. Actually, you know, I, if you ever. Yeah, it would there's, be like there's, that. There's there's a strong. heavy religious and conservative presence in the Russian Federation with the presence of the Orthodox Church, right? Like they're not going to be mystified by the appearance of Jesus. Yes, they would be. You could even when you know the uh, the atheist this community the denies modern day me I don't understand. as it is. Anybody comes up with a miracle, you counter. So it shows quite bluntly. No, if someone comes up with and says that, that X is a miracle, and I say, "Show me the miracle," and it turns out that they don't have sufficient reason to believe that it's a miracle, and I say, "I don't have sufficient reason to believe that it's a miracle," and they get butt hurt. That tends to be what happens. But that's the same thing that would happen if if the Lord. So what you're saying is God isn't flesh, is God capable spirit. of appearing to people such that they know it is God. Um. They wouldn't be able to handle it. Nope. They would interpret. They would Is find God powerful to enough God. to compel in a persuasive way to persuade people that he is God? Yes. But I All think right. he's coming. So why to doesn't he do flesh, that? Oh, he's going to appear in the flesh. Well, so why Jamie, didn't he do that already? people can't handle what? it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's not, you know, that's man. Man cannot handle a lot of things. Yeah, but, but you've just know, you've it. just said that God can appear to people such that they will understand that it is God. That's I mean, correct. God did that before without the context of most people or a large number of people on earth already believing he was real, right? That's the story. He showed up and no one had heard of him before, and then he was there, and he was a big hit, he was bigger than the Beatles, whatever, and then he disappeared for a couple thousand years, and now you're saying, oh, everyone is waiting for the comeback tour, it's going to be a world tour, but no, 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 he's too shy to appear on stage? What is this? Why doesn't he show up? Timing is everything. I mean, Timing is everything. So is he waiting is for something it's, specifically? A, a red I, cow, I would, perhaps? Yeah, I would say the world, to get to the point where it would be able to accept him, it would be able to accept okay. what he has to offer to bring back once was before the fall of Eden. The world has to be ready for it. Okay, so what does a world that is ready for Jesus look like? Uh, a desperate one. <laughs> one where families can't unite, high drug addictions, suicide... And that um, means the world's ready isolation. for him now, supposedly. I, yeah, My I, goodness. Like, to be a, clear. That's the, a phenomenon now. This is what the current social situation, so, with the divorce rate, abortion, um, a man. Well, got, got to watch out for those divorces. Um, right. it, yeah. So to be clear, it was a back at, so to be clear, in the Middle Ages, when one third of the population of Europe died from the bubonic, the bubonic, bubonic plague, plague, that wasn't a desperate population of humanity. Um, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I not. I think that's true. Go there. You know, you know, mm -hmm. you know how you go there. You know what overpopulation is, and it sounds sick to say. This, Please don't tell me that that, that was necessary. You, yes, you put it on the table. What wow. Are you do? <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> Create a more sustainable <laughs> earth that can maintain a population. No, it was a disease. He didn't bring it on. The, the I'm sorry, can anything happen that your God chooses not to allow? 
Is there a force more powerful than God? No. Okay, so if God wanted there to not be a bubonic plague, he could make there not be a bubonic plague. You can tell me he wouldn't, and you can tell me he didn't, because very clearly he didn't. Uh, but if he had wanted to, could he have done that? I don't know. I'll tell you, I don't know. Okay. Mm. And then, really you know what? It's, what we're assuming it's is okay that. to say yeah. you don't know, because guess yeah. what? That is what many atheists also say, Yeah, that we don't know. So we tend to understand more people, people more than you think. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you realize how, you know, the, the, they finally, we finally figured out what transferred the plague. Maybe God gave us the ability to understand it was done by rats. You know, it, you, know you want instantaneous I mean, fix of everything. God sent the plague of rats? For the well, bubonic so plague? Yes, here's the, the thing. plague was brought on by I, rats. I, I'm told no, it was brought no. on by poor sanitation and poor living conditions, yeah. which Ooh, if there was a God that um, w- could have instructed the people in, in, in Europe and London to better improve on their sanitation system, then perhaps the bubonic plague would not have occurred. Yeah. Uh, but that's well, a, that and there was a pope telling, that said now, that... Now you're telling that God should teach people how to clean their houses. That's yeah. correct. I'm that sorry. is correct. If there's a God that has all <laughs> knowledge and all power and can inspire people with knowledge... Uh, and he cares about human beings, maybe pass it on germ theory of disease would be a good place to start. Right. And it did. Eventually it did. You yeah. Oh, wow. Now, All right. You know what? You when I turned in homework on. late in school, I still got an F. Jesus gets an F. Yes. Uh, I don't think so. I think you're, you're asking for everything so quick. that I'm promised impossible. everything so quick when Christians come forth and say, oh, look, this book describes the nature of God. And in it, it says any, it's either two or three people that gather in my name and pray for something shall not be denied it. And they say, oh, and God is all powerful and God is all knowing and God can help everything. And yet people still get raped and genocide still happens and disease still spreads and hurricanes still destroy things. So forgive me for saying, you know what? These two things don't add up. I, I'm sorry you you uh, you have that interpretation. It, it's not it's yeah. you know it's not nothing I can help you overcome because you you First uh, Peter three fifteen. Give give me give me a reason for the joy that you have found. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I found joy. A lot of people have found joy. We want you to find joy. Yep. I we don't I want would to say see you depressed. Here's we here's don't what want I'll to say. See you misled. And I'm, I'm glad for that. And I do not want to see you depressed or you misled. And so I think that perhaps yeah. either again yeah. next week or the week after, I would like to continue this conversation. And I know that Eric would, would love to be in on this call. And, and yeah, there was something I needed to tell him, but I had a... <laughs> oh, well, he's, he's right on the other he's side of the, the class. Hey, he's in the audience. He's in the audience. I appreciate, you know, you let me talk and I listen course, to you guys, yeah. you know, sincerely. Yeah, and thank All you right. for, you know, I, I get a little bit worked up when people tell me that there's good reasons for genocide. So I, I'm sorry yeah. if I came across it's a bit harsh. It's not genocide. It, it, it's oh my war. gosh. It All right. War. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, All right. Rob. Thank you, Rob, for calling in <laughs> and I hope to talk to you again. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Well, Ooh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I think that was a good first call. Um, <laughs> yep. Eric is giving us both a thumbs up. This is yeah. hilarious. Uh, yep. Um, uh, yep. You know, just this idea of, well, we're becoming more godless because we don't understand people, but that's exactly the point. Yeah, I know, and I I didn't (laughs) circle back around to, I'm sorry, you're saying that now families and humanity is worse off and now humanity is more desperate. One third of humanity has access to the internet. Indoor plumbing exists. I'm sorry, when all of the world, all of humanity lived in what we would consider dire poverty by today's standards, humanity was more desperate. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It's it's weird to pick only one of the things that he said that was that ridiculous and go over it. But it was constant. It was consistent contradictions as well. So um, that was uh, very, very interesting. But uh, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I think consistent <laughs> contradictions is called religious indoctrination. And but. it's definitely called the Bible, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
relatively consistent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>